Okay, so today we want to go through your profit loss return on equity homework, which is the homework from chapter 13, the investment math chapter. Question number one says Tom purchased a property for $115,000 and sold it years later for $186,000. What's his percentage profit on the sale? When we talk about percentage profit or return on investment, rate of return, rate of profit, they all mean the same thing. And we all have the same T-bar formula for them. On top, we have our profit in dollars or our return means the same thing in dollars. And on the bottom, we have our original investment, how much we invested originally in the property, and then the rate of return or rate of profit. And that's what they're asking us for in this question. They want to know what the rate of return is. So let's see what we know. He purchased a property for $115,000. Well, right away, that is our original investment because there's no loan involved, so we don't have to worry about anything except the purchase price as far as our investment. As far as the remainder of the information, he sold it years later for $186,000. What's his percentage profit on the sale? Well, his dollar profit, which we need up here, we need that number, is going to be what he sold it for, 186000 minus what he paid for it, which is $115,000. So his dollar profit is $71,000. $71,000. $1,000. And of course, we just brought that over from there. Now we need to bring down that investment of 115, and that's got us all set up for our math. 71,000 divided by 115,000. That equals 0.6174. So equals 0.61744. And we know that's times 100 because it's a rate. So that gives us a total rate of return of 61.74%. 61.74% is our rate of return on that question. All right, number two, Sandy sells a home for $428,000, which she purchased previously for $445,000, obtaining a $400,500 loan at the time of purchase. What was her percentage loss on the sale? So again, it's the exact same formula we had before. Our formula is dollar profit or return And then down here on the bottom of the T-bar is the original investment and the rate of return or rate of profit, rate of loss, same thing. And that's what they're asking us for again. They want to know this rate right here. They want to know that rate of return. So let's see what we have here as far as information goes. She sells a home for $428,000, which she purchased previously for $445,000. Well, those two numbers together can give us the investment she made, or the, the profit, rather, she made on the property. If we look at the profit she made on the property, we can say she sold it for $428,000, because remember, it's what you sold it for, minus what she paid for it, which was $445,000. And $428,000 minus $445,000 is negative $17,000, which is, of course, a $17,000 loss. And that's what's going to go over here on our profit. It's a $17,000 loss or negative $17,000. The way you type that into your calculator is you just type $17,000 and then you have a button that says plus minus, plus minus. You press that plus minus button and it'll put the negative in front of it. Don't type it, don't type the plus minus first. Type 17,000 and then hit the plus minus button. Okay? And it's our original investment, well, she paid 
445 for it, but that's not really our investment in this case. Our investment in this case is how much she actually took out of her own pocket. And here's what we know. She bought the property for $445,000, but she borrowed $400,500 of that total. So her investment in the property is $44,500. And that's her original investment right here. So the math looks like this. We've got a negative $17,000 on top, because that's $17,000 loss. And the investment down here on the bottom is $44,500. So if we do the math, $17,000, and hit the plus minus button, give me the negative, divide it by $44,500 equals 0.3820, and of course that's going to be times 100 because we're calculating a rate, equals a 38.20% loss. It's a loss. And we know that because we've got negative numbers here. Okay? 38.20% is our loss. Okay, let's look at number three. Self a little room here. All right, now we can work. Number three, Andrew purchased an income producing property for $1.2 million and obtain a $960,000 loan paying the balance in cash at purchase. The property generates an annual before tax cash flow of $26,500 after all operating expenses and debt service is paid. Based on this information, what is Andrew's annual rate of a return on his equity investment? So again, it is the exact same formula. Again, it's the exact same formula. It's just when we talk about the dollar return, what we mean in an investment property is it's before tax cash flow because the dollar return is the same thing as the before tax cash flow on an annual basis. On the bottom, we still have the original investment, which is of course our down payment. And over here we have the rate of return. And again, that's what they want to know. They want to know this rate of return over here. So we need our before tax cash flow divided by our original investment. Well, we know the before tax cash flow. They gave it to us. Right there. $26,500. No math required. As far as the original investment, we don't know that. What we do know is that he paid $1.2 million for the property. But he borrowed $960,000 of that. So his investment is actually $240,000 because that was his down payment. And that's the number we're going to bring over here. $240,000. And if we do our math, $26,500 annually returned as before tax cash flow divided by $240,000 equals 0.1104. And again, times 100 because we're calculating a rate equals an 11.04% return. And that's an annual return. So they're making 11.04% annually uh, as a result of owning that property. It's a pretty good return. Pretty good return. 11%. All right. Number four. So the property has an annual gross income, or gross effective income, excuse me, 
of $728,000, operating expenses of total $296,000, and debt service payments of $280,000 annually. The owner made a down payment of $900,000 when he purchased the property for $9 million. Based on this information, what is the annual return on equity investment for the owner of the property? So we go back to that same formula that we've been working on the whole time. Rate of return on equity is equal to, hopefully you know by now, the dollar return, which for an annual basis is the before tax cash flow, divided by the original investment, which is the same thing as our down payment. And again, asking the same question, what is that rate of return? So here's the thing. They, this time they didn't give us any of the information. They expect us to calculate it all. Actually, they did give us some of the information. They gave us the original investment because he made a down payment of $900,000. So that $900,000 down payment comes right down to our original investment. We don't have to do any math for it. What we don't have is the properties before tax cash flow. And so we've got to calculate that, which of course, requires us to write that big long formula out. So I'm going to go ahead and do that and get myself set up. Gross potential income minus vacancy equals gross effective income minus operating expenses equals net operating income minus debt service equals before tax cash flow. And again, I'm going to draw myself some lines, keep it all nice and pretty, divide it out. I usually try to give myself a little more room for operating expenses because that's usually a big box. And then I'm going to draw here so I've got a place for notes and I've got a place for math. Okay, so let's go back and look at what we got. The property has an annual gross effective income of $728,000. So I'm just going to fill that in. $728,000 is my gross effective income. So we're done with that. Mark it out. Operating expenses that total $296,000. So again, operating expenses that total $296,000. I'm done with that and debt service payments of $280,000 annually. So debt service payments of 280, 280 or 286, $280,000 annually. So I'm done with that. That's all the information they give me. That's everything I need in order to calculate a before tax cash flow. Because here's the truth. I don't care about any of this stuff up here. If they've already given me the gross effective income, none of that matters because I already have all the information that I need. I have everything below it, so I don't need anything above. Don't worry about the fact they didn't give it to you. Because you already have this gross effective income right here, you're in good shape. So your math is just going to be gross effective income of $728,000 minus $296,000 in operating expenses equals an NOI of $432,000 minus a debt service payment of $280,000 equals a before tax cash flow of $152,000. That's our before tax cash flow, $152,000. And we know that number is what we need up here in this formula, $152,000. And now our math is set up up at the top. It's going to be $152,000 divided by $900,000. So, we'll come back down to the bottom, 
and before tax cash flow, which is the same as the return, over the $900,000 original investment. equals 0.1689 and of course that's going to be times 100 because it's a rate so 16.89 percent return is your final answer on that question a 16.89 percent annual return so hopefully you did okay on these and you can go back sorry you can go back and take a look if not um, but that should Get you in good shape for profit and loss math.